Hey guys, Stephen here from Heresy Academy. In this video, I'm sort of going to carry on with the spawning a little bit because um, I do want to change the method in what we in in the way we do it. But I didn't want to do it at the end of that video because like it's a decent sized method and I want to explain it as we go along. But we're going to use what's called a coroutine and. Well, to dive straight into it, I'm going to open up the level manager script, and I want to sort of explain, as uh, as you've run this script, the way it works, I mean, you've not really got much information in here just yet, but let's say the player would be a better example, because you've got more stuff to do. So in the player script, you sort of like, you run down, obviously, to start with, before before the start function, it obviously grabs this information of what's attached to, oh dear me, oh I'm in debug, stop, oops. It grabs different information like floats, rules, you know, what components are attached to it. But then it uses the start function. And the start function, it just runs once when it started and it goes. And the fixed update works on, on a timer. So you set that up in your settings to, to decide how, how often this happens. It could be so many seconds um, or like every 0 0.2 second or something like that. Um, the update function works once per frame. But now, if you consider breaking the frame, break like breaking the frame down, it, it must work pretty quickly. The way it does it is it reads down. So if you're on the floor and it sets it as true, it'll do this and this. Once it's done that, it'll go again. So right. So if if you're not like um, if you're on the floor, if that's correct, it'll do this. So it's false, and you set that to false. Yep. But then it'll. Uh, if if they get key code like it, it goes really really quickly it goes you know well quicker than that um but like i said once once it's got to like the end of what it's doing it'll just it'll carry on where it's going so if you set up a function like this jump function and then you jump down and so let's say you're there if you jump down it'll go down here and it'll come down and it'll go back to the jump function again so it'll come down here and it'll go again and end up going back to the jump function it'll come down here and jump function come down here etc etc um, what we're going to do is we're going to use a coroutine, and basically, instead of instead of it keep keep instead of it like having it keep going and going and going, it's going to uh, well obviously it'll only it'll only get called when it's needed, but then it'll just happen once and it'll move along. It'll do what it needs to do and move along, but then if you need to do it again, it's accessible again. So it's like a start function that you can start again if that makes sense. So, it's all going to be based around the respawning. Um, but what I want to do as well is I want to start adding in the uh, the particle systems that we made as well. So what I'm going to do, I don't know why I went into it, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to make public game object. And then I'm going to have def particles and spawn particles. Okay, so I'm going to save this, and what you'll see straight away now, well not straight away, but when it eventually loads, I'll go over to the level manager, and it's going to ask us for these these objects. So I can just assign these now, so I don't forget later on. So you've got def particles and spawn particles. So going over to the prefabs, because I've done game object, it wants prefabs, it doesn't want them from there. So we get the def particle, drag it in, get the spawn particle, drag it in. And I can save that, and it won't do anything yet because I've not told it to. But I just want to add them to it. So when we respawn, we want to play our def, um, our def particle system. So what we're going to do is called instantiate. Now a few things you may notice is, uh, well, it will be we'll create all these pre, uh, create our particle systems, and then we'll respawn and we'll keep running. But we'll just keep creating particle systems every time we die. And they may run once and then finish, but you actually want to take them away. So we'll do that as well as part of a cleanup. But for now, anyway, we want to use what's called instantiate. So basically, like create or returns a copy of the object original. So, like I said, the object original will be our prefab. So it doesn't have to be in the game because it's in our prefab folder. So instantiate. And what we're going to instantiate will be our death particles. And where we want to put it, uh, make sure I've got this right now, it's public transform. So our player dot position. But also we want to uh, make sure we do this is their quaternion rotation. So we want to write out the rotation there, even though we're not having any rotation. Okay. 
And that's it. That's, that's, that's all you have to do. So I can save that. I'm going to go over here now. And watch the game screen. Because I've not changed the camera to follow it or anything. So as it loads in, you'll be able to uh, watch it move along. But just watch, you'll watch the particle system come in and watch the hierarchy as well. So move along. Douche. Ooh. Excuse me, sorry. This time we do want to play on a week. Um, my bad. Turn it off before because I didn't want to do it. I'll go back over here, and then you should see it work. There we go. So wherever you die, it all just goes douche. But it just creates more and more. Now a very similar concept is going to be done for the uh oh sorry, make sure put these to Oh, that's okay. That's the thing as well. I was in play mode, but I changed information of a prefab, which is information of an item saved in our project directory, and it saves. It automatically saves that sort of thing. Um, you don't have to worry about pressing play and then like changing something and then having to change it again. Because if you do it to a prefab or an object in your project settings, that's already saved in your project directory. So very much like we've done that. After we've after we've reset and we've put no velocity, I want to now instantiate our uh, what do we call it spawn particles. Yes, we did. But this time I want to put it to our spawn point dot position and our spawn point dot rotation. So save that and then you'll see it working again. I know I said I wanted to do my co-routine, but this is relevant because I was going to do it either before or after I decided to do it now. So I'm going to click on play. I'm going to come along. I'm going to die. So you may want to do a bit of a better effect on the, the start one. Like make it a bit brighter, things like that, because I messed around with the colour before. But you don't really notice it. I know I'm zoomed in on it on the scene. On the scene view, but listen, you don't really notice it. You don't really pay much attention to it because, well, the the red one's taking your eye, and it's so instant. Um, this is what I'm going to do next. Is I'm going to give it a delay. So now that we've got our instantiation done, because I'm just going to basically copy the code and move it down in a minute. So what I want to do now is a public eye enumerator, and this is how I set up the code routines. So. I'm going to go for public I enumerator, not enumeratable. I'm just going to call this respawn co. Co because it's a, a co routine and because I don't want to call it co, uh, respawn because you can't call it respawn because respawn already exists. Because we're not going to get rid of our respawn, we're going to keep it because we need it. So, what we want to do is we want to take all of this stuff. And we want to put it inside here, but it's not it. That's not it. But just for now, what we want to do now is we want to start our coroutine, and then uh, what do we call it? Respawn co. Is that right? I'm pretty sure that's how you call it. So anyway, so you instantiate your death particles, but then. We want to turn off our. Um, we want to stop the player from doing anything. We don't want to just move it over straight away. So we want to do player dot enabled. No. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Buggery. What do we do now? Oh no! We want the render, don't we? Okay. Let me just think. What else do we want? Um. We've got our components for our velocity. That's the rigid, um, the rigid body's there. So I'm going to turn off the rigid body as well. Uh, I'm just trying to quick, have a quick think now. So, can you access just the renderer? I think you can. So what I'm going to go for, basically, um, 
Oh, it's attached to this. Right, okay, so private sprite renderer. I'll just call this a player sprite. Okay, the same as the player rig. I'm just going to put um, player spur equals player dot into broadcast message because we like broadcaster messages. So I'll get component and then we're going to get the sprite renderer component because we're going to turn it off. And then down here, uh, player sprite dot enabled equals false so that gives it the illusion that it's disappeared but if something else was going on you could still collide with it but obviously it's just a single player platformer so let's have a look at how this looks now I mean this isn't finished but we're going to start building on it as we go along we drag this back in now because we turn off the sprite renderer um, not all code path return a value oh what is this Uh, what, what am I missing here now? Just debug that a second. I've missed something here somewhere, haven't I? Come on. What have I missed? It worked a minute. Did it work a minute ago? Um, not all what's in the doodles return an argument. Not all code paths return a value. Uh, what value? Uh, so we're going for this now. Public I enumerator respawn co. Do I have I've not put anything into it. Come on. Oh uh, wait, wait. Okay, perhaps I need to finish this first. Right. So I was trying to show you an example, but it's not letting me just yet because it's. Miss, it's missing the part of the coroutine that does what it's supposed to do. Okay, so we'll get to what I was doing there in a minute. So, underneath here, I'm going to put yield return new. Um, wait for a second. Ah, this is what I was going to do earlier as well. Um, make a public float. Uh, respawn time. Okay. The reason I'm doing that is because wait for seconds, the seconds is going to be our respawn time, so I can set it up later. And then it will do the rest of this, so it'll move it along, do it like this, and then instantiate that, and player sprite dot enabled equals true. I'm going to put yes. So I save that, I'm going to debug it because I'm pretty sure that's what it's on about. Yep. So the issue with that is I didn't I didn't finish it off because I wanted to try and show you an example before doing it, but never mind. So bring it back to Unity. You'll sort of see what I was trying to do here anyway. Okay, so let's close that off. I'm gonna click on play. As you're going along, or maybe not if you maybe not click in the scene view, maybe click on the game view. As you move along, boosh, you disappear and you reappear because I didn't set that up. Uh, da, 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 da. Which one was it now? We're in the level manager, okay. Let's go to the level manager object. Respawn time. So let's say we just did one second for now. So save this because whatever value here now is in second. The fun seconds. The function is wait for seconds, and then the value is whatever we put here. So now I'll click on play, and now you should see a delay. You should see one second delay. So if we've got this right now, make sure I put it in the right order. So do the particle system. You disappeared, then you reappear. Disappeared, reappear, etc., etc. So what I'm going to do though, I'm just going to go to the spawn particle and turn it off. The starting colour, let's just make it a brighter yellow. A bright green will do. And click on play. 
I just want it to be a bit more exciting, you see. Oh, maybe I should change the shape of it. Oh, no, no, what do I do? Let's change the gravity modifier to minus one. See if that does make it a little bit better. Yay! So now it goes up instead of down. Maybe that. I just wanted to make it sort of stand out a bit more. Maybe I put more particles into it, make them a bit bigger, stuff like that. But that's just for me to mess around with. So yeah. So now that's how to do that co-routine. So like I said, that's where we. That's what we're going to use for giving it a bit of a delay between dying and respawning. Right now, you're not really going to see the impact of it because it's not going to make much difference going from that, like going from that saw blade to there. But as you move along a level and you get further along, you know you'll want like checkpoints and stuff like that first. But pardon me, we'll. Uh, You'll kind of see how it's a bit better when you know you've got the camera following and you see a bit more transition going on rather than just a sort of done. But yeah, so that's it for this video. I hope you like it, so give it a thumbs up. Uh, be sure to subscribe because I've not finished this series just yet. And I've got other series on there, so go and check them out. Um, if you fancy it, check out the Patreon page. The link to that is in the description. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll see you in the next video, guys. Thanks for watching.